good morning dear student we were discussing about uh, block diagram reduction techniques in the previous class we will see we will see now how to reduce the uh, block diagram with uh, multiple inputs and multiple outputs okay so i'll be going directly to the slide um, in which we have uh, multiple inputs and multiple outputs uh, handling block diagrams okay okay so now uh, in today's class we will be dealing with how to reduce a block diagram which will be having uh, more than one input okay so multiple input and multiple outputs if we have how to handle such uh, systems okay see in this example we have two input okay so we have two input and we have one output okay so uh, you uh, you know you have all uh, heard of already superposition theorem so if a system is linear if two inputs are applied you can contribute the effect of each uh, input separately and you can add those uh, effects uh, to get the final final results or an output okay that's what we will be doing here so i have input r i have input u so for this particular block diagram what i do is i consider one input at a time and i'll contribute the i'll calculate the response and the two response what i'll get by considering one at a time i'll be adding them up to get the final response or the final output okay so now uh, what i do is to start with i'll block i'll mask the other input okay so i'll mark mask the input u okay and i'll get the system something like this okay what i did i blocked the one input and i am considering the other input okay so i am considering the input r and i am blocking the input u so if i am blocking the input u what will happen the summer summer doesn't have any significance the uh, the other input if it is not there the summer uh, you can remove it and you get g1 g2 are in cascade i can group them so this is what the reduced block diagram for the condition u is equal to 0 what i did i blocked the second input i considered the first input r here and i have rewritten the block diagram okay so now it is very simple to calculate the output for the input r okay i am calculating the output for the input r so what i can get here this is a unity feedback uh, you know unity feedback negative loop control system here okay negative loop control negative feedback control system so we know how to simplify this okay how to simplify this loop we know so what is the cr value we have that is the output response for the first input only okay we have blocked the other input we got this value that is g1 g2 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 into input r okay that is what the output c of r we will get it okay so what is c of r i repeat once again c of r is the output for the input r okay now i'll be considering the second input now and i'll block the first one so blocking the first one is you are removing the summer itself because r is not there because r we have made it zero okay so now i have to put minus 1 there because why because i have to put minus 1 you can see here to this summer there is one signal entering with a negative sign so unity signal minus sign is there entering to the summer though the input r is not there while removing the summer care has to be taken that the minus is incorporated so that's what we have done here minus 1 block i have taken here and the summer we have removed and the input second input we have considered u here now i wanted to calculate what is cu that is output for the input u okay so this is what the block diagram we have by blocking the input r and keeping the input u okay so now you you can rewrite this this way we are not comfortable we are comfortable something like this pattern i should have an input entering to from the left side i want output output coming out from the right side we are visually comfortable with this pattern i am just rearranging the block i am just dragging the summer to the left 
and I'm taking this G1 and minus one here in the bottom, and I'll be taking G2 in the forward, just to rearranging the term so that the conventional canonical form I can visualize, okay? So what I have done it here, these two blocks, I can group it. How I can group it? G1 I have taken this minus, I can take it to the summer here. Okay, summer plus I can make it minus. This minus you can take it here. And this looks like a negative feedback control system standard negative feedback control system or canonical form. So how to simplify this? Uh, we all know that uh, you know forward path gain divided by one opposite sign of this, that is plus uh, forward path gain into feedback path gain. So you will be getting the output CU, how I can write it G2 divided by one plus G1, G2 into U because I'm giving a direct expression for the output output for the input u so i have to take the input here that is u we have taken okay so what i got now i got now two outputs one for the input r and another for the input u so what i am doing is i am now you know adding both i am adding both to get the final response or the final output. That's what we have done it. So I have computed CR in the previous slide. We have computed CU. You have to add these two and this is what the equation you get. So this is what the output for the given block diagram. Okay. Hope uh, you understood this. Very simple. Okay. So next we have one more multiple input uh, system here. Uh, you know, you have three inputs here. Okay. You can see here, you have three inputs same procedure we have to adopt okay so earlier we had two so we were blocking one keeping the other here what we have to do we have three so we have to uh, keep one and we have to block the other two in each trial so like that thrice you have to do because three input i have to take all the three at a time and and i should block the other two the rest two i have to block it and i have to calculate the corresponding output c okay so look into the block diagram i have u1 i have u2 and i have r these are all the three inputs here uh, you know and entering to this block diagram and i have only one output c so same procedure here what i do is i'll I'll first block the other two inputs, that is U1 and U2. I will block it and I'll keep only the input R. I'll keep input R and I block U1 and I'll be blocking U2. So if you're blocking U1, this summer will not be there. If you're blocking, this summer will not be there. Correct. So G1 and G2 are in cascade. You have to group them. H1 and H2 found to be in cascade because summer will not be there. U2 is zero. So you have to group them. So this is what the simplified block diagram. It looks like a standard canonical form, uh, canonical form, and you can simplify this and you get what output for input R. So output C for the input R, I call it as C subscript R that you can compute. Okay. So this simplification, you, we have already seen how to simplify this forward path block gain divided by one minus why i have minus here because here the sign is plus so one minus forward block uh, block gain into feedback block gain into the input okay that is what the output expression we have so we have taken it okay next so that is what the first input uh, contribution is over. Now, second input, uh, I'll be considering it as U2. So I'll, sorry, I, I'll be considering the second input U1. So if I keep U1, I have to block input R and I have to block the other input U2 to zero. That's what we have done. So you will not find this summer here and you will not find one uh, U2 corresponding summer will not be there. Only U1 you have. Again, this blocks I will be arranging so that that, you know visually we are comfortable to see a canonical form like this okay so i want input entering from the left side i want the output coming out from the right so you are rearranging the block you get g2 as the forward block and this and this block are in cascade you have to group them so you will get this as a feedback path now you can simplify this so this is a standard canonical form we have okay of a uh, you know uh, positive feedback control system and how to simplify forward block gain divided by one minus since i have plus here i have to take minus here minus forward block gain divided by the sorry forward block gain into the feedback 
block gain okay into the input input is u1 i have to take it so this is what the c1 we have okay c1 due to input u1 only okay similarly i'll be repeat, uh, repeating for the third input so i will be blocking the input r and u1 to zero and i consider only u2 okay again i'll be rearranging the block rearranging the block i'll be getting something like this okay this is what i'll be getting by rearranging the block okay you can now simplify this is standard canonical form with a, a positive feedback so you get this expression very similar to the previous case you can write an expression for c2 you can call it as uh, cu2 you can call it as because we have this uh, corresponding to u2 okay they have named it as c2 we will keep it so we got this c2 due to u2 alone so now what we have to do it superposition principle there are linear system so superposition system uh, we are uh, you know we are adding all the contributions considered each input separately to get the final output so final output c is what the c due to r alone c due to u1 alone c due to u2 alone you have to add and this is what the final transfer function you get okay add all the three you will get this particular transfer function you please calculate and simplify at home this is what uh, you know you will be getting the uh, uh, you know output c okay so next one Again, here it is a multiple input, multiple output system. So far, what we were discussing, we were discussing only multiple input with a single output, correct? Here we have increased the complexity. Here we have two inputs and two outputs, okay? So here, uh, you know, we have to see what we are calculating based on that we will mark, we will block the other inputs, okay? So multiple input, multiple output system, they will give clearly what we have to determine. So we have to determine C1 and C2 due to R1 and R2, okay? C1 and C2, we have to compute due to R1 and R2, okay? So what I do is, first I will be calculating C1 alone. So while computing C1 alone, okay i should not consider c2 so i will block c2 okay i will block c2 i will consider only c1 okay next while calculating c1 i cannot keep r1 r2 both at a time i'll keep r1 once and calculate what is c1 corresponding to r1 and i'll keep r2 input and i'll compute the c1 corresponding to r2 okay and i i add those two uh, you know uh, output components to get the final c1 uh, output okay so i will do that okay so i have to determine what here c1 and c2 due to r1 and r2 i have to calculate okay Okay, now uh, what I do is I'll uh, ignore the output C2 because uh, both the output I cannot compute at a time. I will ignore C2. I will consider only C1. Okay, and uh, uh, again, I'll consider only uh, one input R1 and R2 I will mask. Before I uh, mask R2, I have to write the reduced block diagram keeping C2 zero. So if you make C2 zero, if you make C2 zero, Okay, you can write the reduced block diagram like this. Okay, you can write the reduced block diagram like this. Okay, it's uh, it may be a little confusing to imagine. Uh, you can do that. It's very simple. See here, from this summer, I have G2 going, uh, you know, G2 correct. So I, in other words, C1 through G2 coming to this summer. I have from C1 through G2, I'm entering to this summer. Correct. So now, from this summer, output of the summer through G4, through G, G3, going to this particular summer, correct? We have done that. Through this summer, you know, from this summer, through G3 and G4, we are reaching this summer. This summer we are reaching, okay? And C2 is now blocked or C2 made zero. Since C2 is made zero, G4 and G3 found to be in cascade, I have grouped and output of the summer is uh, through G3 and G4, I am reaching this particular summer. So this is what the reduced block diagram I have, okay? Hope you understood that, okay? So next what I do is, next what I do is, I am not able to go to the next slide.
Okay. So this is what the uh, rewritten block diagram keeping C two zero, which we have seen in uh, you know previously. So now what I do is, what I do is, okay. So now I'll make, I'll make, okay. I'll make a very sorry. I think I'm going to the previous example. Okay, so now what I'll uh, do is, so previously what I did, I considered, wait, wait sorry, I'm just uh, missing the slides. Okay, this is what the, uh, this is what the slide I was looking for. Okay, so what uh, uh, what I have done is uh, previously I have uh, blocked the C2, correct? And now I'll be uh, blocking the second input and I'll be considering only the first input. So consider first input and block the other input, you will be getting a block diagram, something like this. So what I did here, I blocked the R2 and this is what the simplified block diagram, you have to calculate the C1 output, that is first output due to R1. I'll be calling that as C subscript double one okay what this subscript says i am computing the output one due to the input one only okay similarly then you have to block the input here and you have to consider only the r2 input and this is what the simplified block diagram you will get it okay after uh, manipulating the block diagram because you are blocking r1 you are blocking c2 you will be getting a reduced block diagram something like this so this is the standard canonical form we have and you have to simplify this output i call it as c subscript one two what does it mean i am computing the output first output for the second input okay this is the first output for the first input this is the first output for the second input so this simplification is very easy you know this is what the standard uh, uh, canonical form you know the formula and you can get write the equation for the output we have done it so now final computation of the output c11 which is equal to the uh, uh, you know the output due to the first input output first output due to the second input you have to add and this is what the equation you have okay so this is what the equation you have okay so now we'll be moving to the next point okay so what i do now i will be uh, uh, ignoring c1 now i'll be considering only output uh, second output okay so i'll be considering now the second output c2 and uh, if you block c1 this is how the block diagram look like Okay, so given block diagram, if you refer, you, you will be blocking C1 there. Okay, and this is what the new block diagram, you will get it. Okay, so C2, we have to calculate for the uh, two inputs R1 and R2, two inputs R1 and R2. So consider, consider R2 keeping R1 zero. Okay, you get this particular block diagram. Okay, you have to trace the path, you will get it, it is not that tough. Only thing is path you have to trace, the blocks which are in cascade you are grouping and you will be rewriting the block diagram, okay. The cascade block simplification we have done, whichever comes in the way and you know for making R10 you get C22, what does it mean? The second output for the second input, this is what the expression, similarly we will make R20, you get R1 input entering uh, uh, considered here. And this is what the simplified reduced block diagram for that particular condition. What is the output we are getting now? It is C21, Does, that means we are getting the second output, second output due to the first input, okay? Second output due to the first input, other parameters are blocked. Okay, so this is what the expression we have. Again, according to superposition, second output, I can write it as the second output due to the second input and plus the second output due to the first input alone. Okay, considered one at a time. So this is what the transfer function we have, or sorry, not transfer function. This is what the output equation we have. Okay, so 
this is how we will be computing multiple input multiple output system okay so now uh, this we have done it okay this is how we will be calculating c1 and c2 okay so next we have the concept writing a uh, you know block diagram for a armature controlled dc motor okay this is an armature controlled dc motor uh, uh, situation we have for this we have to write the block diagram okay i'll go to the previous one hope you have uh, clear uh, how to write the uh, what we call uh, output equations for the uh, multiple input and multiple output system anyway okay so this is what the block diagram for uh, for the armature controlled dc motor okay armature controlled dc motor so here let us not waste time in uh, writing the equations because the same problem we have discussed in module 1 already uh, all videos are uploaded and it is available please refer how to write uh, you know how to write mathematical equations differential equation to this particular armature controlled dc motor we have learned in the previous classes so you know direct equations i have written here okay so direct equations i have written that is the voltage va okay that is the voltage va okay we will be uh, applying okay and you know we will be controlling the motor okay will be controlling the motor so this is what the equation we can write here we have inductance l here l a here armature inductance armature control circuit inductance this is the resistance okay so this subscript a we have just to say that we are connected to the armature okay similarly uh, from the other side you know the other side we have one more equation that is mechanical system we have to the other side you know to the right we have mechanical system for that we have one more equation here okay so we have two equation one for the electrical section and the uh, other one for the mechanical system okay so i am viewing here armature voltage control uh, you know armature uh, uh, what we call loop or armature circuitry separately in electrical domain we have and mechanical uh, section we will be having one more equation here so these two equation we will be implementing separately and finally we will be connecting them okay so uh, how to write the equation how do i get the equation it is already discussed you please refer so these are all the two equations i can write for the given uh, you know given electromechanical system okay this is an electromechanical system for this you know we can write these two equation okay so now uh, for this thing you know i can uh, uh, okay so first i will take the first equation okay first i will take the electrical section equation and i have a equation something like this so you can see here output is the armature current output is the armature current that i'll be feeding to the armature of the motor uh, you know to control the speed or whatever it is flux or uh, you know speed so what i do is i have to get an expression for i a of s i repeat for i a of s i have to get an expression so for that what i do i'll send this term to the right correct i will send this term to the right and i'll i'll take this term in the denominator okay so va minus s minus kb into w w of s angular uh, you know uh, displacement uh, what we have learned so that i'll be you know uh, taking to the uh what we call to the right and you get an expression for ia of s correct okay so you can see that va of s plus sorry minus this term this minus this term and whole divided by this term is what ia of s correct so that's what we are trying to write here okay so va of s r is entering to a summer and w of s through kb constant kb entering to the summer with a negative sign correct and this particular difference is multiplied by what 1 by this term 1 by la s plus ra okay 
1 divided by L A S plus R A, I have rewritten, okay, because I wanted S to the left here, because I can take inverse Laplace very easily. So I have uh, taken the standard pattern representation. Otherwise, this block is equal to 1 divided by this particular coefficient of this I A of S, okay. So this minus this signal multiplied by this is what Ia of s, okay? So now in this equation, Ba of s is an input, this is an input and Ia of s is the output. So I have taken Ia of s here as an output and W of s is an input and Va of s is an input here. And this is what the output and this is what the piece of block diagram I can write for the equation one. Any doubt? Hope uh, it is very clear. Get an expression for Ia of s. While getting an expression for Ia of s, you get that V of s minus Kb into W of s, omega actually, um, uh, Kb into omega s will be having to the right side and whole thing has to be divided by this and to get uh, Ia of s. That's what this block diagram says, okay? So now what uh, we do is, now what we do is, I'll go to the second equation. You have your second equation, right? Let us implement the second equation. Let us implement the second equation now, okay? Second equation, we have something like this, okay? So as in the previous equation, we found Ia of s as an output, that Ia of s is the in input for the mechanical system we have. That armature current is what the input to our mechanical section and rotation is what the, uh, you know, uh, uh, angular velocity is what the output here we have, okay? So the rotation is the output or uh, angular velocity is what the output here. So this is what the block diagram we have. So refer the second equation, okay? So get an expression for this omega s. Get an expression for omega s from the second equation which we have written, okay? So this is how you get the block diagram. So remember Ia of s is the input which is passing through the uh, KMA constant, okay? So you will be having torque now, uh, you know, torque generated. The current is generating a torque and this is what the amount of gain we have in the mechanical system. So you have to pass through that. So that's what the amount of angular velocity will be getting as an output, okay? So this is how we have implemented the second equation. So output is this angular uh, velocity and input is the armature current. So this is how we can write the block diagram. So now the first and second piece of the block diagram, we have to, uh, we have to group it. Okay, you can see here from the first equation, we have this piece of block diagram. From the second equation, we have this particular piece of block diagram. So for the first equation, electrical system. So electrical system, we have a current as an output. It takes, what are the input? It takes the angular velocity from the mechanical system and it will take the input applied voltage and it generate a armature current, correct? So armature current here is generating a torque which leads to the angular velocity, correct? So I'm clubbing these two equations now. So this is how I'll be getting, just to join this Ia of s and this Ia of s you have to join, this omega s and this omega s you have to join. So this is what the uh, you know combined block diagram we get, okay? So this is the equivalent block diagram representation of armature controlled DC motor, the figure which we have seen in the previous slide, okay? So this is very important, okay? So this is how we write the uh, equations to the, uh, sorry, block diagram to the uh, given uh, uh, electromechanical system. So it is very easy now to simplify. This you can simplify, you get an expression for uh, voltage and uh, this uh, angular velocity ratio, control ratio equation you can get, forward path gain you can compute. So this is a standard canonical form. Only thing is you have to multiply these three blocks. So this is a standard canonical form which we have uh, designed for the armature control DC motor. Okay, so all these uh, preliminaries which we have discussed in the module one, module one that is electromechanical system uh, modeling we have discussed there we have learned how to write the equation, the same knowledge we have used and extended here to write the corresponding block diagram. So here we have electromechanical system block diagram for the armature control DC motor.
okay so hope uh, you have understood okay we, with this we will conclude the block diagram uh, reduction techniques and block diagram algebra so next the class we will be taking up the signal flow graph again it is a graphical method uh, which help us in uh, arriving at the transfer function we will see that in the next class okay thank you